Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these pen displays for craft shows. These are very easy to make and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, for making this pen stand here, I'm going to take and cut up some stock here to give me my parts. And I've got two 3 8 inch thick by 3. Actually, it says 3 on the label, but it's actually 2.5. It's what we call dimensional lumber, but not construction lumber. But it's 3 8 inches thick, which is right on. And then the width, it's called a 3 inch, but it's actually 2.5. All these pieces are that, and I'll use three pieces here to make the pen stands. And I'll make a couple sets of these. So I'm cutting them up to 11 inches long, and that will, one inch spacer between the pens, holders will give me 10 pens per stand. <laughs> Out of a three foot uh, length of these boards here, I'm going to get three stands out of that. Enough for 30 pens. So I will cut up a few more, then get on to the other joints and assemblies. I'm going to make these tongue and groove joints. At least that's what I call this one. Usually a tongue and groove joint is when you're joining two boards together flat and you got a tongue and a groove on opposite sides. But for this, I'm doing it this way. Get a right angle at it. The dark parts are the parts that will be cutting out. So I'll wind up creating a tongue on this and then a groove in this part. Now, make sure I line up my marks here. This is the part that's going to have the groove in it. So I want this groove to have an edge out here that's at the max end of this board. So what I'm going to do is use my fence here to help me hold this all in place well and I'll make my mark. To guide me for making that cut. Now I'll use that for lining up where my blade will start at. Then for the groove part or the tongue part I've got my blade height set to 3 16ths of an inch and these pieces are just a tad slimmer than 3 8 of an inch. 3 16 of an inch is half of 3 8 so I set the blade to that height and yeah, maybe just a tad below 3 16 and I can kind of finesse this fit as we go along. And what I'm going to do is cut these tongues first and then I'll make my grooves to fit these tongues. Okay, I have my fence set so that the outer edge of the blade here is 3 16 of an inch, or slightly less, away from the fence. And that'll give me my groove here. That'll allow me to cut out the waist here so I can make this into a tongue. I'll make the first pass, which will define the shoulder for that. And then I have to move over to cut out any further waist yet. So I won't be using the fence for doing that part. I'll be probably flipping my fence over to this side and clean that up. Flip this over end for end so I can get this side to do it because I'll be doing tongues on both ends of that. Put my fence to the other side. Now to clean this out. I have a little bit of a sliver on these yet. So I will adjust my fence, see how it cleans it up. Okay, that does well. It gives me a nice tongue here. Next I'll be making the groove in my other board here where I made my line. That'll define the outer limits of the tongue. Okay, to minimize measuring and get things as accurate as I can, I'm going to use the stock itself to set the point for which this cut should start at for making the groove. What I do is use the stock and I line up the teeth here so it's at the same thickness from the fence as the thickness of the wood stock here and I can feel you know the teeth here if it's right on and even or not. It's even so that's going to give me a perfect cutting slot at the point that I want. Now for all these cuts, I'm going to leave my blade height at the same point of 3 16 of an inch for all the cuts that I make on this. For making the tongues and for making the grooves, blade height will be at 3 16 of an inch. Okay, I'm going to start cutting these grooves. To widen the groove now, I'm going to move the fence in ever so slightly at a time to widen up that groove. Then I'll keep checking the fit after each cut. So there I have a good friction fit. For the top part and then the base, I'll do the same thing here with that. Okay, so I've got these pieces made. I've got 
two or three eighths inch thick, two and a half inches wide, half inch thick, two and a half inches wide. This will be the base. That's the heaviest and also because I'm going in a quarter inch, as you can see on the plans, uh, to make some detents there for the tips of the pens to rest in when they're up on the stand. This one has got the tongues on both sides. So that's going to go in here like So this piece goes in to the base with the tongue. Got another tongue up here. This is the top piece that will go on. And this piece is, then I'll get all this glued together. But this top piece is where I'm going to put the holes, the 5 eighths holes to hold 10 pins. And then I'll cut this in half so it'll give me a rack for two pen sets. Okay, so on this board I marked a line down the center of the board. Then I marked cross lines here to give me like crosshairs for my drilling at each one inch mark so this will give me 10 holes all together. Next I'll go over to the drill press drill these out with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit and after that I'll have all these holes I'll come back to the table saw here and cut it in half to give me two upper rests. Now in this shot I forgot to have my microphone turned on but at the drill press here I've got this piece where I'm going to make those holes I have a 5 8 inch Forstner bit mounted into the chuck and I'll use that to drill the holes at each of the 1 inch marks that I placed on there. Here I drill the holes until I've got all 10 of them done. Hey, back to the table saw. I set my fence over so that this will be cutting down the middle of this. So I got two upper rests. Now I've got two upper rests I can use. This will go on to here. I have to do the groove on the other piece, but that'll go on to there. Then I got to do is drill these holes down here for the tips to rest in. Okay, so my next step is going to be taking this apart before I do any glow up and take this apart and. I'm going to sand all the flat surfaces here to 220 grit. That'll be good enough for a display stand. Then I'm going to go to the router and round over the edges, all the edges on this upper support, and into all these holes in here, everything else, I'll round those over. This back part here, back uh, support, I'm not going to round over at all. On the base here, I'm going to round over the front and side edges here. Also, I'm going to make the shallow holes here for the pen tips to rest in. Okay, here I'm going to make the detents for the pen tips to fit into on this lower board. And I'm using this concave bit for recessing that hole. And the way of measuring the quarter inch depth that I want to attain, I take it down so that the top of this cutting edge here is even with the top edge of the wood. That'll give me a quarter inch depth there. Okay, so that gives me all the holes for the tips of the pins to rest into. Okay, to save you from some of the boring details, I took some 220 sanding paper on a block like this and sanded all these flat surfaces smooth. Also did some of the edges here, get those smooth. Uh, you can do along here also, get that smooth. And the edges. So, got all those sanded. Next I'll be going to the router to round over all these edges. Okay, here I'm going to round over uh, the top edges of these parts and the base. And when you're doing the top edges like that with the router bit here like this, you have to turn this upside down to run it through to make the round over. What I'm doing is I'm using a 1 8 inch round over because this is only 3 8 of an inch thick, so I don't want to round over that much. Now this gets to be pretty noisy, and it's something you have to be very careful because you're working with small parts here. You've got to be very careful and take your time. So that gives me a good round over on all the edges here in the upper part and a little bit under the bottom side here just to kind of smooth it over. But I'm not worrying about rounding over this part back here because this is going to be the back part of the mount. Okay, so basically this is done. All I got to do now is I'll take this apart, glue it up, clamp it up. So after the glue is dry, I'll give this about three coats 
of spray varnish and that'll set up pretty good and then a light sanding uh, just to smooth that off. And we'll have a done project for displaying pens. Put in the glue. Pop this back part in. Glue into this slot. Doesn't take a lot for this. It's going to be a good tight joint. Then it's a matter of clamping it. Don't want to create any awkward. I like to get these pretty well centered on the joints there. Tighten it up so I'm not getting any off ports there. Do one kind of in the center here. Let those set up. Wait for glue to dry. Okay, here I'm going to finish this with this clear aerosol lacquer from Minwax. It's a clear semi-gloss. Dries in about 30 minutes. What I'll do is spray this on and give it a couple of coats and it'll look really good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got the inspiration to make something of your own. If you did, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, fellow colleagues, and fellow craftspersons. To see what else I may come up with in the future, please subscribe. Now, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you crafty. Thank you.